Swift UI has a lot of options to present views in your apps. And sometimes it can be a little bit confusing enough how to show this. In a previous tutorial, I talked about sheet and now I want to continue and tell you about popover. In some cases, even though if you're using a popover in your SwiftUI app, it will show as a sheet. I'm going to show you this sample app, which you can find the link in the description. And the first exercise before I show you how to use popovers is to actually test if you can recognize which of these views that I'm going to use now, that I'm going to demo now, is actually a popover. It's quite tricky because even though I use the popover in code, there's a lot of new modifiers for presenting views that came with iOS 16.4. So we're going to investigate them today. Now I have a little quiz for you and you have to guess which one of these is actually a popover. The sample app runs for both iOS and macOS. It's a shopping demo app. So I'm actually fetching data from the fake shopping API. It's not the most amazing app, but it does the trick. So we see all this presentation in context in an app. Okay, I have here a list of products with this is in a navigation suite view so you can see more details then i added here way of filtering for example i can say i only want to see jewelry then i fetched the new data and it's not a lot of data but i wanted to see the updated ones so what kind of view is this do you think this is a popover it appears as a view on top of your main content with additional features but in this case because i am filtering here i have to pick a certain category it's actually a picker view inside of a menu the menu you can recognize by this down arrow and for the picker i had to use a inline style on the ios version i used something different so when i press this button this sheet comes up and now you can guess if I use the popover or not. <laughs> and actually I didn't, although I could have used a popover. This is because popovers on iOS and compact mode, per default, they use a sheet instead. If you use a popover with a sheet style, you can also use the newer modifiers where you can decide of how large you want to make this. So even though it's, a, if you use a popover with the new presentation details, you can also accomplish this UI element. But in this case, I actually used a sheet. The right answer would have been, yeah, a sheet or a popover I could have used. Then I have here this additional button in the detail view with a couple of buttons to make this a favorite or share or open shopping cart. And I have here a picker on iOS. This looks like this. And I used for this element here and used a different picker style. This is the new palette picker style where you can get this nice UI. And I guess you already noticed the similarity between this button and this. This is because in both cases I used a menu. Just uh, here I used buttons and pickers. So oftentimes you have this kind of additional information as menus. They're quite useful menu or context menu. So still no popover. Then let's go to my detail view here. And now if I press here, select an emoji, I'm pretty sure you recognize that this time I finally used actually a popover. Most of the time you can see that there's a popover by this little popover arrow. The same view on macOS looks like this, and then you even get this nice transparent background. I guess in this case, I probably could have changed my layout a little bit and make them a little bit closer for macOS. On iOS, I need to have more space so you can actually tap properly. So the other thing that you now see is that I managed to on iOS use a popover because this is, as I said, usually adapting for compact size classes to use the sheet instead. Luckily with iOS 16.4, we got some modifiers that we can say how to adapt for compact mode that we want to show the popover. You can also use this to instead of a sheet show a full screen cover. It makes it a lot more flexible, but sometimes it's flexible and automatic adoption means at least I get sometimes confused. So with this demo project, I want to give you a little bit more examples in an app. So you see where you would actually use what. And here the popover makes a lot of sense because I have this special grid layout with these emojis. If I, for example, use also a picker like I did here for my filtering categories, I would have a very, very long list. But I want to have this grid layout and I can't do that with the menu 
the popover can do this for me. And the other thing is you can decide how large this actually is. Uh, so you can say how wide and how high this is. So it's much more flexibility. You would either use this popover style, or as I showed you here, you can also use a sheet that is smaller. That I could have also done to adapt for the smaller screen sizes. Let's now have a look at the project so far. This is my feedback view where I want to attach a popover to this button. So the user can either write a review or select an emoji. I already prepared here this button. And the main thing is the state property for the selected emoji. I'm just using here a struct emoji identifiable and the emoji string is the value that we want to use. For the content of this popover, I want to show the emoji selector view. So this is a scroll view with a lazy V grid. And I used here an adaptive grid item of minimum 44. This is because this is the smallest touch target that you should use for iOS. Otherwise, your, if your finger is quite big, then it's really difficult to hit the one emoji or this one target. Going back now, I want to show this here. And the first thing we need to do with all of these presentation views is to create a state property that says if you show this or not. And I only have your one sh view that I'm showing. So I use a Boolean value. Add states private var is emoji pop over presented. This is a Boolean and I say false in the beginning. When I press on, when I tap on this button, we are going to toggle this property. Is emoji presented toggle. And now I need to attach here my popover. Actually, I need to actually show a popover. This is a view modifier. You can put this wherever you want to, but it's very important to consider where you attach this view modifier to. So let's do this outside. I'm going to move this afterwards. So we see, we decide where we want to show this and then I am going to use as the content my emoji selector view with a binding to the selected emoji. And now when I toggle this state property, we will see the popover. I'm on iOS in compact mode. So this is going to be a sheet. Let me just switch to an iPad. If I now tap, it shows it as a popover. The position looks a little bit strange. <laughs> this is because the position is used from the around the view that I attach this to. And if I go to the selectable pre and I select here the VStack that I used where I attached it, this is exactly where I added here my popover to. So this is this view and I'm attaching the popover to this view, which means that we should see this hook around this view. We can go back to the interactable preview. And it's over here. It's not directly at the edge because yeah, the position is, you can decide how to position this by other arguments in the popover for the anchor. But before I do this, maybe I'm moving this popover to a position that makes more sense, which is around my button. So I copy this and move this around my button. And now if I tap on this, the popover comes up here. The reason why it's so large is because I basically didn't really give it any information on how to size this. This is because here, so the popover doesn't really know how to size itself. And usually it tries to horizontally use a fixed size. So to the minimum available size. And because of the scroll view and this lazy stack, they don't really have a fixed minimum size or intrinsic size. So what it's going to use is the text here, the head. So the text of this popover, this is the size it uses to scale this, to set the width. You can also test this by, if I make this here shorter and then we, I try again. Now it's only select and it's really only this one line. I'm going to undo my change. So we have the popper title again. Now I want to have a little bit of space. <laughs> There's multiple options. I could set a fixed columns, a number of fixed columns, but I'm going to make it a little bit easier by adding here frame. So the popover doesn't shrink it too much. So this is a frame of minimum width of 200. And this seems to be three columns. Let's do 400. And the thing is also we need to decide how high we want to have this because maybe I have here a very long scroll view. So I say maximum height of 
500. Usually this shouldn't this cover or shouldn't be so big. 540. Okay, I'm sticking with this so you see there is some of them coming out. When you tap and select, it is nicely selecting this. Now you saw that by moving this popover, I could decide on the position where this arrow here is. You have more control by using the attachment anchor and arrow edges. So this is the attachment anchor and the if I try now the arrow is at the leading bottom edge. This is this attachment anchor. On what point of my view, this is from the view that we are attaching this to, on what point of this view do we want to attach our popover to? So for example, let's use bottom and I'm going to add here a border. So this is the view we are attaching this to. Now when I tap, it's attaching it to the bottom of this view. This is bottom center. And you can try all of this con configuration. Maybe it's the center or the trailing. It seems the trailing is quite all right, especially if I now select something and try again, then it's attached to the icon here. The arrow edge doesn't do anything right now. You can check in the documentation. This is ignored or this parameter is ignored on iOS, so you don't need to try. It's only on macOS. It's the location of the popover arrow on macOS. This means I need to move to going here. And now what I said, oh, <laughs> just collapse this side. So I said the attachment can occur. So the view where I have this is on the trailing. So this is still the same, but the little arrow is different. So now it's on the bottom always. You can also modify this to trailing. As you see, it's actually from the view point of view of the popover. And you think of this popover from which of these directions do you want to have this arrow head? In this case, it's the trailing one. To see this better, I use the top one. Then I can easier distinguish between which anchors this direction take. So the attachment anchor from my button here is still on the trailing edge. And from there, the arrow edge is on the top. Usually if you don't specify this, it's just using the one that makes most sense where you have space. Like if I move this very much on down here, there is not a lot of space going downwards. So it would try to put the pop over on top. I'm not really sure if you oftentimes need to set this. In this case, it probably doesn't look good because it's at the edge. So you could either move it to the icon directly or I'm just saying it back to trailing. And I'm going to take away the border. As you see, you can pretty much fine tune how you want to show this popover, <laughs> especially on Mac, where you have all the control in which direction to show this. And you can use frames for the sizing of these popovers. Now let's go back to first the iPad. This is fine because also in the large screen, it was showing the size. And then checking the iPhone. This is using a sheet now. And we have a couple of options to optimize this. Because it's a sheet, you can use something like presentation. Also all of this presentation stuff works. Like presentation details. You can say medium. And now when I tap here, it only shows the medium height. They also have fixed sizes, point where you can define point size, you can define multiple of them. But by what I wanted to use in this case is actually I don't want to use a sheet or a half sheet. I'm insisting on using my popover. So this is presentation compact adaptation. And you have two possibilities. You can say the adaptation. This is for both direction vertical and horizontal size classes, or you can specify something different for horizontal and vertical. Let's go for the easier one. Basically this modifier is saying, how do you want to adapt if you're in a compact size class. And the default is showing a sheet. Or you can also say when I'm in compact, I want to use full screen cover. And then it fills up everything or pop over. Now it's shown like this. And I guess 400 is a little bit too much. Yeah, this makes more sense. It is using now, as you see, it's, I specify to use the trailing edge. And the position is on top because there's more space above than below the pop over. Then the last one here is none. So don't do anything when I'm compact, which is again using a popover. If you want to do something different for a horizontal and vertical size classes, you can use the other one. Presentation, compact adaptation, horizontal and vertical. 
So maybe in horizontal you want to have a sheet and only in vertical you want to have a popover. Okay, now I am using a sheet because I am in horizontal. And then if I rotate the device and now try, it goes for the vertical compact size class. And in this case only uses the popover. This gives you quite a bit of control. In my case, I think I'm fine with just not adapting anything. So I always want to use a popover. If you use a popover, it automatically dismisses if you touch somewhere outside. So if I tap here, it dismisses this popover. Or when you tap on one of these elements, it also dismisses the popover. Only if you're using a full screen cover, then you need to call dismiss. But I did this actually just to make sure I really dismiss it. Here, when you tap on one of those elements, I call dismiss. This is the environment property. And also that means also for full screen cover, it dismisses this view. To wrap up, I showed you how to implement a popover and to customize it, where to place it with the arrow edge and how to adapt this for smaller screen sizes like on the iPhone. You might want to use a sheet or full screen cover or actually a popover. Popovers are much more useful on larger screen sizes like the iPad or on the Mac. Popovers are in a similar category as menus, sheets and pickers. If you want to learn how to make this kind of menus that I showed here with this filter button or this menus where we can select different button options. Check out the next part for presentation with menu and also with pickers. I hope you enjoyed this video. Leave a like and subscribe. Until next time, happy coding.